<coughs> Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 138, and we are on page number 87. Page 87, please turn to it. On the top of page 87, it discusses in the second paragraph, it discusses the concept of central tendency. Central tendency. Majors of central tendency. That's what we're going to talk about in today's lesson. We're not going to actually do any problems from the book. We just want to make sure that we understand what, what this concept means. Central tendency. How do we go about measuring central tendency of a data set? The very first question that comes to mind is, what the bloody hell is central tendency? What does it mean? Well, in layman's term, in a simple language, central tendency simply means where do, where do, central tendency simply means where do the observations, the observations, uh, OBS is an abbreviation for observation. Instead of writing out the entire word observation in the statistics class, you will see a teacher write OBS. Where do the observations, or if you like, data tend to cluster? That's the question we are asking ourselves. We have a data set, we have a whole bunch of observations, we have a whole bunch of values. Where do most values tend to cluster? Where do we find most numbers? It tends to cluster where? For example, for example, for example, here's here's the data set here. It's a very simple thing. Let's say 1, 3, 7, 10, 13, 13, and 17. Here's the data set here. An exam was given. Teacher gave an exam, a quiz, where the maximum points in the quiz that one could have gotten was 20. And out of 20, just to give you an example here, out of 20, one student had a score of 3, another one had a score of one student had a score of one, another school, uh, student had a score of three, uh, third, seven, ten, two people had a score of thirteen, one guy scored third, seventeen. So we have these students here, we have taken the exam. Where do, where, where, where do, do the scores tend to cluster? Well, there are three tools that I use, three tools that I use to answer this question, to answer this question. The question being, where do the data cluster? Where do these observations cluster? Where do they tend to come together? Where where do we find most of them? In other words, where do we most of the most of the observation we find in this neighborhood, around here, around this value? Do you understand? In order in order to question that, where where do the scores tend to cluster together? Where do we find most most of the students in the class scored around what area? Around what what neighborhood? Well, to answer that question, we have three tools at our disposal. Three tools at our disposal. The crudest of all, the crudest of all, what is known as what, what is known as is what is known as median. You know what a median is? Median is just the middle value. I'm not going to write everything on the blackboard, but you have to understand that when we say middle value, middle value after the observations have been arranged in either ascending order or descending order. doesn't matter whether they are increasing or decreasing, but they have to be arranged in order. After you have arranged all the numbers, all the data set in order, either ascending or descending order, then the middle number, middle value is what we call median. Here, for example, how many observations do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have seven observations. 1, 2, 3 from here, 1, 2, 3 from here, 1, 2, 3 from here. Oh, this is the, this is the median here. It's the crudest of all. This tells me that students scored around 10. Most students, most students scored around 10. Well, I guess 
around 10, most of them I guess, this is 7, this is 13, 13, this is far away from 10 and that's far away from 10, but most of them, we have 7 students, most of them sc scored around 10, that's what we are saying here. It's the crudest of all because it doesn't require any calculation. If you want to get more sophisticated, the next tool that we have at our disposal to answer these questions, where do most students, uh, in what, what uh, around, what value the most students scored, well, the next, next tool that we have at our disposal is what is known as mode. And mode, of course, as you know already, is the most frequently appearing value. Most frequently appearing value. And if you cannot read my handwriting, which is why I always read as I write, so that you, don't, you have no right to complain that you can't read it, because I'm, I'm reading it, appearing. Now I forgot how to spell appear. I think appearing has two P's. Most frequently appearing value in this data set would be which value do you see appears most frequently? So 13 appears most frequently because there are two of them. So the mode here would be 13. The middle value, the median, was 10. Now what happens? What happens? So median is very simple to figure out when we have odd number of observations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three on this side, three on that side, we are done. Three values on this side and three values on this side. We are done, the middle number is 10 there. But what happens if you have even number of observations? If you have even number of observations, then if you want to calculate the median, it requires a little bit work. For example, let's introduce one more score. Let's just make it interesting. Let's introduce one more score. Let's say one student had a score of zero. One student had a score of zero. Now what happens? Now we have eight people. Now we have eight people. You will see the median will no longer be 10. It will be something different. We have eight, stu uh, eight students. Four here and four here. There is no middle number. When that happens, when we have even number of observation, then the median happens to be, the mode will still be 13. 13 appears most often because that's the only number that appears twice. That, that's not going to change. Mode is still, still be 13. But here, when you have even number of observation, when we have even number of observations, this is, this is where the complication comes in, then we have to take the average of the two middle ones. So we have 3 on this side, 3 values on this side, the two middle ones are 7 and 10. 7 and 10, and we're going to take the average of those two. And that's going to be our median. 7 and 10, that's 17, 17 divided by 2, 16 divided by 2 is 8, so it's 8 and a half. And what, are, and what does it mean when we say the median is 8 and a half? What it means is this, here I'm going to rewrite the values, we have 0, 1, 3, 7, 10, 13, 13, and 17, 8 and a half will be right here in the middle. 8 and a half is right here in the middle because 8 and a half is 1 and a half away from 7 and is 1 and a half away from 10. As you can clearly see now, 8 and a half is a magic number, that's the number that falls in the middle because half the number falls to the left of it, half the values are below it and half the values are above it. it even though 8 and a half does not appear anywhere in the data set, nobody scored an 8 and a half point, but it still happens to be in the median because we have even number of observation. Let's move on and let's talk about the last one. The last one is so in this case, our median is no longer 10, as we just said, it's 8.5 with this new data set. We're done with that. So we, we have three tools. We have three tools. We talked about the first one, which was the mode, which requires no work. You just see which one happens more often, most often. Then we talked about median, which requires a little bit of work. And then finally, the last one is the most sophisticated, most sophisticated in the sense that it requires most work. It is not something that you can just observe the data and just pick it up right away. You're going to have to sit down and do some calculation. And that is the mean. The mean. Or if you like, the average. So what's the mean here? What's the mean here? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this thing. But before I rewrite, here, let's do it here. 0, 1, 3, 7, 10, 13, 13 and 17. We need to add them up. We, we add them up and divide by the number of observations. How many observations do we have? We have 8 observations. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, which is why we took the average of the two middle ones to find the median. If there are eight observations. We're going to see the total of these observations and we divide by eight, obviously, and we have the mean and there's your last two. So one more time, central tendency simply means where do data tend to cluster? Where do they tend to appear? Uh, gather where do most of the values uh, appear well the crudest of all tool is the mode you simply look at which one appears most often you say well this, this 13 appears most often most people have, must, have, must have scored in the, around 13 okay, 13 appears most often most people have scored around 13 well this guy scores 7 10 and this guy is around 13 most as you can see out of these people that's very crude the next one is median. We, we line them up from lowest to highest or highest to lowest, either, as I said, either in ascending order, either in the increasing order, or descending order, in the decreasing order, and we pick the middle number. If you have even number of observations, we take the average of the two. Let's talk about the mean. So we have to add them up, which is what I'm going to do right now. So pay attention here as to what I'm going to do here. It's not a big deal. It's nothing else shattering. By the way, if you do want to, the average that we're going to figure out right now Average is a very funny concept. Average is a very funny concept because most people, when you ask them to figure out the average, they do it out physically. They figure it uh, with, by brute force. They actually add up all the numbers and divide by the number of observations, which is correct. That is the theory. But if you actually understand the concept of average, which sounds very funny because it's a very simple concept, and yet, do you really understand it? And if you, re if you really did understand it, a lot of the times you don't have to do that much work to figure out the average. I would like you to I would like you to watch some videos. There is a series you will find on my channel called Basic Math. Basic Math. And I would like you to watch day 68 through 75. Just type in Basic Math, day 68, watch testing. And if you don't want to watch all the way up to 75, at least watch 68, 69, and 70. And if you think it's worthwhile, if it's fruitful, if it's useful, you can continue to watch until 75. And you will see that when you watch this video, you will see that average is actually, average is an egalitarian concept. It's an egalitarian concept. Everybody has to be equal. We learned about egalitarian in our vocabulary lessons on day number 30. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, watch the vocabulary videos. Just type in vocabulary words, day 30, and watch that video where we learned about egalitarian. Average is an egalitarian concept. Everybody has, at the end, it's a magic number. It's a magic number that makes everyone equal. Let's see what that magic number is here. Watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens. So first we have to add them up. So we're going to add them up. Watch. We're going to add them up. So stay, stay with me in the story as I told you several times. So there's 10, there's 20, there's 30, there's 40, that's 50, that's 60. Are you with me so far? Here we go one more time. That's a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 3 and a 7, that makes it 60. And then we have left over, we have a 3 left over here and a 1 left over here. That's just a 0. So it's 64. 64, 64, how many observations do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8, uh, eight observations. The so mean is just going to be 64 divided by 8, which is just 8. The mean here is 8. And what does it mean when you say the mean is 8, the average is 8? Average is 8 here. That is same as saying that, think of this in terms of money. Think of this in terms of money if you like, if you don't, or in terms of score, doesn't matter. This guy has no money at all. This guy has a dollar. In it. This guy contributed a dollar. This guy contributed no, nothing for charity. There is certain charity. This guy gave nothing. He gave one dollar. He gave three dollars. He gave seven dollars. This, this guy gave ten dollars in charity. These two people gave thirteen dollars each. That guy contributed seventeen dollars. On average, a person contributed eight dollars. Eight dollars is where everybody, as if everybody contributed equal amount of money. And that equal amount of money here is eight. Why eight? How do I make this thing? Watch for here. Okay. How do I make this thing 8? Or take away 2? Well, if you're going to take away 2 from here, we have to give it to somebody. Let's give it to this guy. So this, take away 2, give it to this guy. We're done with that thing. How do we make this thing 8? Or take away 5? If you take away 5 from this guy, we have to give it to somebody. Let's give it to this guy. This is 13. Let's take away 5 from this guy to make it 8. 
And who, who should we give it to? Let's give it to this guy. This guy has 17. We want to make it 8. Let's take away 9. We need to distribute this 9. Okay, I'm going to do it in different color because 9 is going to get a little complicated. We need to distribute 9. We need to give distribute this 9 here. We're going to, let's see what we can do here. We need to make this guy 8, so let's give $1 to this guy. So we took away 9, give $1 to this one, we still have to distribute $8. Let's give $3 to, oh, this already has 6, let's give $2 to him. So that's 1 plus 2 is 3. We need to make this 8, let's give $3 to this guy. 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 6. We have taken away $9. We have distributed $6 so far, we need to distribute 3 more dollars. Who should we give $3? Well, this guy right here. 2 plus 3 is 5. If you give him 3 more dollars, he becomes 8. This guy becomes 8. This guy becomes 8. This guy becomes 8. Take away 2 from the 10, it becomes 8. Take away 5 from the 13, it becomes 8. Take away 5 from the 13, it becomes 8. Take away 9 from 17, it becomes 8. You see? That's what average is. It makes everyone equal. It's a very egalitarian concept. Anyway, like I said, but obviously, we can only do this after the fact because we knew what the average was 8 and then I'm just trying to make you understand where, where, how, 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 how does 8 work out here. But if you were to observe this data, you could have made a guess here. This average is going to be around 7 or so. So you try the 7. If the 7 doesn't work, try 8 and one of those works. Watch this video as I said. You might, you might like something. You might get something out of it. The quick recapitulation as to what we learned in this video. Central tendency simply means where do data and data's observations tend to cluster. There are three ways we can figure it out. There are three, three tools that we have at our disposal to answer this question. We can either look at the observation that appears most often, which is the mode, or we can look at the observation of value. It's not, not necessarily an observation because eight and a half never appeared before, the, before it was eight and a half eight, right here. Eight and a half doesn't appear at all, but it's a value. It's not necessarily a, something that you observe. It's a magic number where half the observations are below it and half the observations are above it. That's your second tool to measure central tendency, and that's called the median. And finally, of course, there is always the mean, which is the most sophisticated tool in the sense that it requires some work, it requires some calculation. Tomorrow, in the next video, we will learn what is known as normal, normal distribution. What is normal distribution? How do we go about plotting it? What does it mean? We can use... We, well, we can't actually... Anyway, tomorrow, in the next video, I'm not going to use this example. I'm going to use a different, little bit different example to give it a nice... Because this is not a normal distribution. And you will see in the next video why this is not a normal distribution. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.